shipping overseas uh, in the 90s in France. Uh, he and Nan have had a very long and fruitful career of service to the kingdom of God on different nations, uh, many years in Africa. Um, was the guy who basically kind of discovered Paul Eshelman, who actually went on to do things like the Jesus film and other things. So a great guy, just a wonderful friend. I hope you, if you don't know him, he'll be with us these days. He flew out here to be an encouragement to us uh, all the way from Florida. So we're very grateful, and he's going to be opening up the word for us this morning. So we thank you, Jim. teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. When we think about the task before us, we need to always start with the reminder that all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth and on ev over every nation. Jesus is the Lord of every nation even those ones that wouldn't appear to be so in our day and our age. And then he reminds us in Acts, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus always had a divine mandate of going to all the nations, and he gave us the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Great Commission, to accomplish that task. And then in Acts 2, 8 and 11, he says, And how is it that we each hear in our own language in which we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia. He goes on and mentions all these groups of people. And we hear them speaking in our own tongues and the wonderful works of God. So the Holy Spirit came to communicate the love of Christ and the message of Christ to people in all the different nations and ethnies of that time. And then I'm reminded of what Paul said. He said from one man in Acts 17, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. You know, the nations are not just by chance. This scripture tells us that God ordained their times. They, he ordained their boundaries. And I think the implication is even their cultures, so that they would seek him and find him. And so God has his plan of using all of these things for his glory. He says to us in Acts 13, For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. I love the example of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, where he said, When I am with the Jews, I seem as to be one of them, so that they will listen to the gospel and I can win them to Christ. When I am with Gentiles who follow Jewish customs and ceremonies, I don't argue, even though I don't agree, because I want to help them. 
when with the heathen I agree with them as much as I can, except, of course, that I must always do what is right as a Christian. And so by agreeing I can with, win their confidence and help them too. When I am with those whose consciences bother them easily, I don't act as though I know it all, and I don't say they are foolish. The result is that they are willing to let me help them. Yes, whatever a person is like, I try to find common ground with him so that he will let me tell him about Christ and lest Christ save him. I do this to get the gospel to them. So we see even in the life of Paul that he was thinking in a cross-cultural way to think about how he could present his message in a way so that his hearers would understand and that there wouldn't be barriers to their understanding. He became all things to all men in order that by all means possible we might save some. My own life as I've experienced ministry now for the last 53 years, I've become convinced that we're never going to see grassroots movement of God's spirit unless they're both biblically accurate and culturally authentic. If people feel like it's a foreign thing, they're not going to take it into their heart and it won't be viral and take off in their own culture. We had the privilege of working in Africa for many years, and as you know, uh, the Jesus film, God has used it, and it's the Old Testament, a period piece, or, or the uh, New Testament, a period piece, but we began to see that as we were showing the film, most of our follow-up material was written, and yet 80% of the people of that area are oral learners. And so we realized that we needed to start making follow-up films in a more cultural, effective way. And so in Africa, we made a film called Walking with Jesus, which was culturally based. We brought in cultural advisors from all over Africa to make sure that it was accurate culturally. And when we began showing that in the, after the Jesus film, the response rate went up 45% of people coming to Christ because now they could understand what Jesus was saying and doing in their own cultural situation. So in my own experience, I've seen how as we lift up Jesus in a way that's more culturally relevant, that it really bears fruit in people's heart. I love what Jesus, what it says of Jesus, or he said of himself, when I'm lifted up on the cross, I will draw everyone to myself. He was speaking certainly of his death and the resurrection, but certainly as Jesus is lifted up like passing a magnet over a field of iron filings, people are drawn to him. Daniel told us in his vision in Daniel 7, he says, As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. He was given authority, honor, and sovereignty over all the nations of the world so that people of every race and nation and language would obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. And then we see in Psalm 22, the whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. People from every nation will bow down before him. For the Lord is king. He rules all the nations. In Isaiah 14, 24, he tells us, The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will stand. This is the plan determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. For the Lord Almighty has purposed. And who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out. And who can turn it back? You know, the Great Commission's a dumb deal. God has promised that he has his plan that will never be thwarted, that will never be turned back. I love Habakkuk, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In Matthew, the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then finally, the end will come. In Revelation 7, 9 to 10, 
He says, after this I looked, and before me there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne in the front of the Lamb. We know the end of the story. God has already promised us that from every nation, tribe, and tongue around the throne, too many people to count. So what God has called us to think and talk about this, these two days together is certainly on God's heart, and we can count on God's Holy Spirit to accomplish His work as we agree and, and uh, submit to Him. Let's just pray together. Lord, thank you that you are the Lord of the Great Commission, that you have your plan, that you are accomplishing it, and we're humbled that you would allow sinners like us to walk with you and be involved in what you're doing. We submit to you, Holy Spirit. May you lead us and guide us. May we know your thoughts. May we have your wisdom. May we have your mind. And we know that only you can change people's hearts and minds, and yet you use culturally authentic tools and your word in mighty ways to bring people to you. And we pray that this will be the result of our time together for your glory and for your namesake. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.